So good morning everyone. Uh, welcome on the Keyside booth. We are here at the ECOC 2017 in Göteborg. My name is Adrien Luchet. I'm Solution Manager at Keyside Technologies. And today I would like to talk about challenges while testing uh, foreign energy optical transceivers. So the move from NRZ to PAM4 as well as the trend to optical disaggregation result from the need of the industry to address an ever increasing demand for more bandwidth in the data centers as well as the uh, always decreasing cost per bit. So these choices, PAM4 and optical disaggregation, have raised new challenges in terms of module performance but also in terms of module interoperability. interoperability. And um, that's why it's very important to carefully test foreign rigid transceiver before uh, they are deployed in an open environment. Today I will uh, talk about challenges regarding the testing of uh, optical transceivers. But before that I would like to have a quick view on the foreign rigid transceiver ecosystem. So as you can see we have different form factors. What about um, the electrical interface, interfaces and uh, optical interface? If you have a look at the optical size, you can see that many different optical interfaces are possible. You have from 1 to 16 fiber, single mode or multi-mode fiber. You can have 1, 4 or even 8 wavelengths per fiber. Uh, you can have NRZ or PAM4 modulation, etc. You, don't, you also have different baud rates. Uh, there is a similar picture for the electrical side, so different electrical interfaces are supported. You can have from 4 to 16 lanes supporting NRZ or PAM4 modulation. But moreover, the shift to PAM4 have, uh, has raised new challenges in, in terms of testing compared to 100G uh, uh, NRZ based transceiver. Of course, we have a new modulation format, this is PAM4, but we also have a new metric it's a TDQ. Uh, you, we have to deal with a new speed, 53 gigabaud. And last but not least, we have to deal with very noisy and distorted signals. Indeed, PAM4 based transmitter assume uh, usage of uh, FEC. So the target BR is around 2 to the minus 4. And they also assume the usage of an equalizer. So the signal we detect are usually very distorted and very noisy. And this is a challenge for uh, testing them. So let's uh, start with a comparison between a 100 NRZ based 100G transmitter and 400G based uh, and uh, uh, PAM4 based 400G transmitter optical transmitter test. So what are the differences? First of all, the optical modulation amplitude that is used for NRZ transmitter has become the outer OME for PAM4. The trans transmitter and dispersion penalty has become the TDEQ transmitter and dispersion A closure quaternary for PAM4. And there is a very important metric that is used for 100G transmitter that is not used in a 400G transmitter, and this metric is the eye analysis, eye mask. And the reason for this is that the PAM4 based transmitter are usually have very distorted signal and assume the usage of an equalizer such that um, mask analysis won't be the right criteria to assess a, a system performance. So what is TDQ? In order to understand, to better understand this metric, uh, let's consider an optical signal captured at the output of your optical transmitter and capture with a sampling scope. And here it's important to note that the sampling scope is assumed to behave like a reference receiver. What this means um, is that this reference receiver has a specific analog bandwidth and include an equalizer. We will see this in the following slides. So let's have a look at the capture waveform. Once we have captured with this waveform, we can calculate the BR, we can calculate the intersymbol interferences, and we can calculate uh, the noise. We can also generate a reference noise-free waveform corresponding to the transmitted waveform, which has the same OMA but no noise. And finally, instead of decreasing the power of the transmitted signal in order to achieve the target BR, 
we mathematically add some noise, some virtual noise of a waveform to achieve this target BR of 2.4 uh, uh, to the minus 4. This virtual noise here is displayed in red on the figure. We are doing the same step for the reference uh, waveform and here the virtual noise we add to this waveform to achieve the target BR is displayed in yellow. And the TDEC is simply the ratio of the variance of these two noises. So it describes the performance of your actual transmitter compared to an ideal transmitter for the same target BR. There are some challenges when using this TDEC metric. One of the challenges I already mentioned is the usage of a reference receiver. The IEEE 802.3BS describes this reference receivers, receiver and uh, it assumes uh, that it has an analog bandwidth at the Nyquist frequency of your board rate. So if you have a 26 gigabit signal, you have a 13 gigahertz uh, analog bandwidth. It also assumes that your receiver includes a reference equalizer. In this case, it's a five-step T-spaced equalizer with optimized steps. So how can we get this reference receiver? One possibility on our proposal is to use a DCA, a Digital Communication Analy Analyzer based signal processing. So a DCA is a sampling scope with pattern lock capabilities which enable to reconstruct the transmitted signal and further on to process it. Uh, Keyside DCA solution also include features to apply uh, an equalizer, FIR equalizer, and also to optimize uh, its steps. Let's now have a look at the receiver side, optical receiver. In order to test the performance of your optical receiver, you need to generate a optical stress signal with specific metrics. These metrics are listed here for different flavor of the 200G and 400G uh, standards. So it have to present, uh, present a specific outer OME, a specific extinction ratio, and also a specific TDQ. However, the, the IEEE standards does not specify exactly how to achieve the TDQ, for instance. You can use different uh, stress mix of sinusoidal interference and Gaussian noise to achieve this TDQ value. So even if you have different uh, stress mix, they can lead to the same TDQ. And now is the question, do you, do you expect the same performance for your transceiver? In many cases, yes. But in some cases, uh, it could be different. Think, for instance, about uh, clock recovery. Does it behave the same way with Gaussian noise or with sinusoidal interference. So it's very important when you calibrate your signal that you'll be able to repeat this calibration in, and, and to repeat the same, uh, the same stress mix. Another challenge is to achieve a very stable calibration for the optical stress signal. Here, for instance, you see some measurements uh, of a stress, optical stress signal uh, along time. And uh, this is in the case when we have a standard reference transmitter with non-optimized biasing control. Reference transmitter are usually Marsender modulator based transmitter and you really need to have a carefully controlled biasing circuit in order to get a very stable extinction ratio or TDICQ uh, a long time in order to ensure long term measurement. We should also think about the requirements in terms of TDEC uh, accuracy. Which accuracy is required? Do we need 0.2 dB accuracy for the TDEC me measurement? Do we need 0.1 or even less? So this is uh, still an open question. And uh, we should also be careful that the receiver performance as well as the resulting TDEC value strongly depend on the test pattern. We have plotted a, a table from uh, Marco Manzini from uh, Cisco, which shows a uh, measured TDEC for different uh, uh, stress sequence. So you have PRBS7, 13Q, SSPRQ, and so on. And you can see that there are strong differences between these stress sequence. If you look at the difference between the PRBS 13Q 
and SSPRQ, uh, sequence there is 0.5 dB TDEC difference. So now I would like to address the challenge of uh, the stress signal calibration. Calibrating an optical stress signal can be very tedious, uh, also for uh, experienced engineers. It can take several hours. The reason for this is that there are very complex dependencies between the stress source you're using to generate your optical signal and the target matrix. So in order to generate this signal you use a mix of Gaussian noise and sinusoidal interference. You can vary the amplitude of this uh, noise, but you can also vary the ratio between sinusoidal interference and Gaussian noise. You have you can play also with the extinction ratio on the pattern generator or the, or the jitter. Or you can also play with the optical attenuator to adjust the power of the omega. And there are very complex dependencies between these stress factors and the target matrix. So how solution? We propose a solution here is a software-based automated calibration. So the idea is to use a software to automatically control the equipment settings iteratively to converge toward the target, target matrix. So the software will read the actual metrics of the stress signal and adjust the settings of the arbitrary waveform generator, pattern generator, or reference transmitter accordingly. So that's a whole from my side. I hope you enjoyed this short video and thank you for watching.